Before we start styling our navigation bar, there are a few things I want to explain. The first is that if you look at the HTML for our navigation bar, you will notice that we are using specific HTML tags at uh, specific levels. First, we start with the header element for the navigation bar itself, and then the navigation menu, we wrap it around a, nav a nav tag, and then the menu itself is an unordered list with list items within it, and then the drop down themselves are also unordered lists. So generally, when you are um, displaying anything on a website that looks like a list, you should most likely you will need to use an unordered list. Sure, you can use a div or a span or any other element and then use CSS to style it to appear like a list, but this is generally not good practice because sometimes uh, some of the users that are browsing your sites are disabled, which means they probably can't see. So they use some softwares that will be um, reading your website based on the HTML for that website. So if you don't use the right elements in the right positions, um, those softwares will not understand the, web the website well and your readers or uh, your disabled viewers uh, will not be able to understand your site either. Oops. Okay, so that's the first thing that I wanted to explain first. The second is that whenever I'm using CSS to style my website and I realize that my CSS file is going to eventually grow very big, I usually segment the styles within that file into different sections so that I can guide myself on, on how I can better organize the styles to make sure it, it's easy for me or other uh, developers to maintain that style file, that CSS file. So the way I segment this is using uh, CSS comments. Uh, for example, I usually begin at the top with, uh, I begin with defaults. Um, I start by styling the defaults and then after default, I'll go to components. And then after components, I'll go to pages. So defaults here represent the styles that I want to take effect uh, on every, uh, like everywhere on the website. But by default, if I use an element and I don't apply any style to it, it should assume some of the default styles that I've defined in this uh, default section. The second is components. A header is an example of a component. And this card like this is another example of a component and so on and so forth. This is also an example of a component. So a collection of elements that provide or display a certain uh, piece of information, I consider them a, uh, components and I, I define the styles for them under this section. And lastly, we have pages, for example, the index page, the login page and so on. So that's how I organize my CSS. So now we can start styling our navigation bar. And we are going to start by designing the logo itself. And then after that, we'll do the navigation menu. If you look at the CSS for the HTML, rather, for the logo, you will notice we gave it two uh, CSS classes, logo wrapper and TD none. We are going to define the style for TD none. And we'll define it in the default section because it's a default style. We are going to reuse it in many other locations on the website. And TD none here simply stands for text decoration none. And um, what this does is it's going to remove the underlying effect on links. That's it. And we don't want this blue color. So if you want to remove the color, we'll just make the element to inherit the color of its parent. And by default, the color on a, on a page by default is black. And uh, so, it's going to be a black color. All right, so that's it for this uh, TD non class. The next class we need to style is the logo wrapper. So that's uh, part of the header component. So we're going to uh, place the style for that under this uh, component section. We will give the text within the logo wrapper a font size of about 1.4 rem. And that's it. Then next, we are going to select this letter B within a span. So what we'll do is we'll do logo wrapper and then span. 
and then we'll give it a background color of this color I prepared in the background. We give a padding at the top of zero pixels, that is top and bottom, and then five pixels left and right. We give it a line height of zero, a border radius of two pixels, and a color of white. Okay, so we refresh and it looks good. So that's it for the logo. Now we're going to proceed to design the navigation menu. So let's first take a look at the HTML for the navigation bar, or rather the navigation menu. We are wrapping it around a nav element, so let's select that nav element. It's within a header, so we'll start with header and then nav. The first thing we'll do is we'll give it a red border just to be able to observe it and then we'll give it height inherit so that it should assume the height of its parent which is this 80 pixels for the header okay we refresh and you see that it has the same height now as its parent yeah so um the next thing we're going to do is we want to eliminate all these uh decorations this list decorations all these dots and they are coming from the unordered list they appear by default on all unordered lists so we are going to select all unordered lists within the header so we'll do header ul and when we do header ul it selects not only the nav menu ul but also all these drop downs because all of them are also ul or that is unordered list and they fall under the uh, nav menu or rather they fall under the header so on order list inside header we first of all also eliminate the default margin and padding set those to zero and then we'll do list star type and set it to none when we do this and we refresh You'll notice that it has eliminated all the margin and padding and it has removed all the list elements or the list items okay um our, our navigation items are not going to be stacked vertically like this so we need to select the nav menu itself this one so we are going to do header nav menu and then the first thing we'll do is we'll display it using flex and when you display an element using flex it is going to um, present all the sub elements under it in a row direction by default which means horizontally from left to right okay so that's it and remember this second selector specifically selected the unordered list that is the nav menu it did not select the drop downs within it that is why the uh, list items for the nav menu are presented horizontally from left to right while the drop downs are still stacked vertically which is exactly what we want because we want the drop downs to be vertical as on the final project so the next thing we need to start now are the links within the navigation menu so we are going to select uh, the nav menu and then every link within the nav menu which is going to include even the links in the drop down so just after the select element the select the css select for the nav menu we are going to add another selector for nav item and all links within the nav item and we'll display it we'll give it display of block text decoration none we could also use the default class we defined earlier and assign it to all links but that just seems like a bit more work so i prefer to just define the text decoration uh, instead on this uh, selector the next thing is we'll give it a padding at the top of 30 pixels and then uh, that is top and bottom 30 pixels and then left and right 16 pixels then we give it a color of this color that I prepared in the background 
and just to help us better uh, identify the elements on the page I'm, I'm going to give it a temporary background color of let me just choose uh, this and then a border of one pixel solid uh, let's say blue or blue violet okay so we reload and this is beginning to look good but we don't want the uh, the padding for the drop down to be as big as the one for the navigation menu itself so we are going to select all a tags uh, within a drop down so the pattern is uh, header nav menu nav item drop down and then links inside drop downs so this is this applies to links only to links within the drop down we're going to give it a different padding of 16 pixels instead of 30 pixels top and bottom so this will have 16 pixels all around which will make it a little bit uh, smaller than the one we have for the nav menu all right so this looks good and i'm going to stop here and continue the design in the next video